In this video we build the world's first V12 header that joins all 12 cylinders together and fires them like a revolver into one single exhaust to make it sound even better than this one. You might think you've just heard a classic Formula 1 car, but it was actually the sound of this one. <laughs> you wanna hear it? Yes! The Bagani Sonda with the Mercedes M120 V12. Der durch das Klangbild eines Zwölfzylinders begeistert. The cause for this amazing noise was the combination of the Mercedes V12 with these beautiful equal length headers. When I first heard and saw all this, I was desperate for it for my Pagani Zonda. Perhaps this is, I do a special deal, a special deal to, uh, for the intake manual and the exhaust. And it was £110,000. <laughs> I had to say, I'm really sorry, Arashi, I can't, I can't do it. And so the Sonda became known as the best sounding production car ever made. Okay, some say it's the Porsche Carrera GT. But there are really no other contenders. So the formula is simple, Mercedes V12 plus equal length feathers equals Formula 1 sound. <laughs> this Formula 1 sound was the reason why I dropped the 6 liter 12 cylinder into a Nissan. And one thing was for certain, equal length feathers were a must. But because the project had to be finished in 6 weeks from start to finish, so drop in the motor, completely wire it up, invent a manual transmission and magically summon the clutch. Time was a little short to build a custom set of headers too, but doing it without them was not an option. There had to be a faster solution. And after a lot of research I found out that the old BMW M5 world of the production line with factory equal length headers. They not only had the right diameter but also roughly the right shape and most importantly the same spacing between cylinders. I could make that fit. And since the V12 was built like two inline sixes that were joined in the middle, I just buy two of them. It wasn't quite that easy, but time flies when you're having fun and the goal. And to my surprise the M120 with the BMW M5 had a sounded horrible. <laughs> Just like one beam, no, two BMWs without exhaust. Was the formula equal length feathers plus V12s wrong after all? What was the problem? Should I join the headers together or keep them completely separated? I've tried it all. <laughs> But nothing did fix it, I had no clue. But maybe you have, here we have a header of a V12. What makes the difference between nice and sh should sound much better with a really quiet exhaust. So you create a seal over your ears with your hands. This is an aftermarket header for an Aston Martin V12 and it sounds like this. <laughs> Next up is another Aston Martin, but this time equipped with equal length feathers fitted by the factory and coupled with a sports exhaust that sounds like this. Yeah. What would the Lamborghini Diablo sound like with aftermarket headers? But when we put the headers with the strange name on it, it suddenly sounds like this. Maybe you have figured it out already. Here again, the BMW M5 header on the M120. And here the king of engine noise.
The difference is in the collector. This is the part of the header where all the single pipes are joined together. Not only the collector angle but also the length has some influence. But the most important thing for good sound is the construction type. If the pipes merge smoothly together or just end abruptly makes a difference between this waspy BMW exhaust mode or this wonderful scream. This does not only make a difference to the sound, but also to the power delivery of the motor. And BMW does that what makes the most sense for a road car. A header designed for a broad usable power band. The downside? It just sounds not nice. But this downside is shared by Ferrari and Lamborghini as well. But luckily we have tuning. The Japanese tuner Gawaii Sosaki that was first to transform the Mercedes S600 V12 into a F1 like sounding car. With a custom set of 6 in 1 headers, now also sells them for Ferraris and Lamborghinis. Normally, you wouldn't put 6 in 1 headers onto a sports car to gain power, but for the amazing sound they make, it's worth every single horsepower you have to give up. Wild claim, huh? I can't even say for sure if you really lose horsepower, because I've never tested it. Now, I could go on and tell you about pressure waves and so on, but I have a strict rule on this channel. So I'll give you the short version. No manufacturer ever has put a 6-in-1 header on one of their racing cars. Not even when peak power was a priority. Yes? And what about a Lamborghini LE3512 that was used in the 1989 Formula 1 season? Ah, uh, you mean that engine that was known for its beautiful sound and absolutely had no power? And later got its 6-in-1 header changed to the same style Ferrari used? Good point, I didn't think about that. It might be hard to believe, but when it comes to sound, Ferraris have a lot of untouched potential. Like this comparison shows between a stock one and this one with a 6 in 1 header. And no matter how much this Lambo is trying, But with the stock headers, it will never touch this. Oh wait, what? And now when I show you a header like this, you might already know what it sounds like, right? Well, if that's what you thought. This is the header of the McLaren F1 and like you can see here, it's 3-in-1 headers never really merge together. That's why it kind of sounds like four three-cylinder engines running in parallel, but never hitting the high note. Not unlike a three-cylinder motorbike. Also doesn't hit the high note. But this is what a 30-year-old Formula 1 Ferrari can do the best. Here the headers are joined together by really short equal length pipes. But Honda did that differently back then. On their Formula 1 V12 the headers were joined by unequal length secondary pipes. And how does this sound? Not too bad, but not top grade, but only because Ferrari exists as well. So let's make it short. The more cylinders are joined together by equal length pipes, the better the sound. And you don't have to stop at 6 and 1 either. There are already quite a few car builds with 8 and 1 headers. 
Normally when you see a 60 old Mustang like this, you would expect it to sound something like that. But this one sounds like this. With a header like this, it's no surprise. But now there's also another element you have to take into consideration. Something that doesn't matter with three cylinders at all. The firing order. Traditionally, the engine fires into the collector crosswise. But in this Mustang example, the cylinders are fired in sequential order, like a revolver. This of course has a bigger influence the more cylinders are joined together, but it's also much harder to build and symmetrical setups like this wouldn't be possible. But to be honest, maybe you shouldn't overestimate the influence on sound of it either. The Japanese S600 with 6 in 1 header also sounded pretty sweet even with crosswise firing order. Here you can already see the biggest problem with these kinds of headers. Where are you gonna fit all these pipes? Especially when you start dealing with even more than 8 cylinders. Um, thanks everybody for the kind comments. This is also one of the biggest challenges we have to deal with. We not only have to find space for 50 feet of piping, but we also have to make sure that it can be fit together and doesn't block access to vital engine components. And of course connect them in the right order. It's really child's play. The Nissan V12 is long gone, but now my friend Tim... Tim! has given me the chance to redeem myself and turn this idea from design into reality. This is what Enix... And luckily Tim has chosen the right car to make it all fit. A Mercedes SL Plex Series. And the construction of the header is already finished. Okay, except for a little mistake with the numbers, which causes me to do the wall header again. The project is getting along really well, and it has to, because Tim will participate in the Iron Drift King later this year, where the first time in my life I will be able to experience something like this.